quarantine has given me a lot of time to film videos, edit, put them on YouTube, and try to grow this channel like never before. Since the start of the quarantine, this channel gained 24 subscribers, and I'd actually consider April of this year the best month for the channel ever. But this video is about three cubing YouTube channels, or YouTubers, that grew so much more very quickly. It was 2017, and YouTube recommended a video to me about getting a faster cross or X cross or something. I don't remember exactly, but it was by a smaller creator who only had about 200 subscribers or so. I checked out his channel and subscribed. One of his recent videos was about him getting a bunch of subscribers overnight, but that wouldn't be the end of his rapid growth. Just four months after that video, JPerm had over 12,000 subscribers, and in February 2019, two and a half years after the first video, the channel hit 100,000 subscribers. When I'm writing the script for this video in May 2020, JPerm has 356,000 subscribers with several videos over a million views. Another YouTuber who had relatively fast growth was Tingman, and while his channel growth wasn't as dramatic as JPerm's, it's still kind of interesting if you look at his channel as a whole. Tingman's channel has been a mixed bag of content for most of its history. From wedding videos, to card tricks, to piano playing, to Photoshop tutorials, and you get it. He posted his first cubing video in mid-2018, and although I can't see how well it did when it was first posted, it's now the 7th most popular video on the channel. He posted a few more cubing videos after that, but he really started putting out cubing content consistently in 2019. Many cubing videos later, and... This video really blew up, currently at 7.1 million views. It's the first video I saw from this channel, and it seems like that's the case for many other people too. This spike in Tingman's monthly subscriber graph coincides with the time that the video was uploaded, and he's mainly been posting cubing content since then. I'm going to throw in one more channel, and that is Cubastic. When I first found this channel, I was surprised that I had never heard of a cubing channel with over 200,000 subscribers. What's even more surprising was that the first video there was posted just a year and a half ago. In it, Cubastic claims to be the craziest and most amazing speed cuber in the world. Now that's a bold claim, but his videos are pretty cool and they look more cinematic than most cubing videos. But I was left wondering, how did this channel get so big so quickly? A couple years ago on the speed solving forum, I made a list of the most subscribed cubing YouTubers and I've been occasionally updating it since. The list includes the obvious ones like JR Cuber, Red KB, JPerm, but it also includes foreign language channels not well known to an English speaking audience, ones like QB, the Maui Sha, and however you pronounce this. Evgeny Bondarenko в Кубе. When I updated the list the other day, this channel rose to number two with over a million subscribers. And as I was checking the subscriber count, I noticed that this channel was run by the same person as Cubastic, and Cubastic was just the second channel or an English language version of Евгений Бондаренко в Кубе. Now it made more sense why Cubastic had become so popular. So what can we learn from these channel success stories? Here are four tips that I gathered from these channels. Of course, these aren't needed to have a successful channel, but they can help. 1. Have a specific niche. For example, one channel could have a mix of vlogs, music, product reviews, gaming, and so on, and another channel could just have, let's say, video game walkthroughs, and the second channel would probably be more popular because it has a specific niche. For a cubing example, JPerm focuses mainly on tutorials and educational videos, and because of that he grew super quickly. An even better example is Tingman because when he went from posting a whole variety of content to just mostly cubing videos, he was able to grow a large subscriber base in the Cuban community. 2. Make videos that appeal to non-cubers. Okay, this one isn't necessary and I'm not suggesting you switch your entire channel style to gain a few subscribers, but it's a common trait I've seen in these three channels. For example, JPerm's most popular video is a tutorial on how to solve the Rubik's Cube, which is probably the most searched for cubing term, especially by a non-cubing audience. The video that made Tingman blow up, One Cube Many Cubers, could be understood by someone unfamiliar to speed cubing, and that's one of the reasons I think it got so popular. Finally, Cubastic does this most notably in his videos that are just showing himself solving cubes, since you don't need to know how to solve any cubes to be impressed by someone solving a pedaminx. 3. Promote your content. As I said earlier, Cubastic is the second channel of a much larger cubing YouTuber, and that was likely a large factor in the channel's growth. I don't know for sure, but he probably promoted the second channel on his main channel. I usually promote my videos on speedsolving.com and in reddit communities like r slash cubers. 4. Get lucky. Yep, just get lucky. 
Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about this, but that was the case for at least two of these three channels. Jperm had his channel posted on a popular Facebook group, and Tingman just kind of randomly had a video blow up out of nowhere. You can't really plan for this or make it happen with much certainty, but it's a major factor in many YouTubers' growth. So those were some of the fastest growing cubing channels and some things we can learn from their success on YouTube. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more cubing content like this, and I'll see you in my next video.